here is a quick introduction to Frames 5, which is a pretty awesome animation program, which is easy to be understood by as young as kindergarten, and complex enough that even people who are old like me can use it. Now when you open Frames 5, you start off looking at a big blank screen here. This is your initial frame. It's the first still image of your animation. You have a timeline down here which will show all of the frames in your animation. You've got some tracks here where you can add music or record some sound. And you can click on the clock and it shows you how long your animation is. You can also click back on this thing here to go back to this view. Now, to add art to this, there's a few ways you can do it. You can import things made in other programs or even things that were made by you know, taking photographs. But how I normally have students use this is they either make the shapes themselves by going over to the tools over here and clicking on shapes. And we can add things in. Let's add in a large rectangle here. And I can click and drag this around. Now, as you can see, when I added this shape, it's got a bunch of squares that go around it. I can use these to resize my rectangle, I can make them larger or smaller, stretch them out, make them skinny. I also have this ball right here that I can click on and rotate the entire shape around, which I really didn't want to do. So let's click on the undo button here. That will fix any mistake that you make if you just made it. It also has, if you look, these teeny little squares here called nodes, N-O-D-E, node. And you can click on those and totally change the shape that you're working on to anything that you want. You can even hold down the Alt key when you click to add a new node where there wasn't one before. And if you've clicked on a node and you press the Delete key, it gets rid of a node. So if I wanted to turn this rectangle into a triangle, I could click on that node, hit Delete, and now it's a triangle. Or I could have just gone into the shapes thing and picked a triangle, but never mind about that. All right, so back to what I was doing. I'm going to have this go all the way across. Now over here is an option called stroke. This is for the line that goes around whatever shape you've added. And I can make that line thicker or narrower. I can change the color of it to pretty much anything I want. Or I can turn it off entirely, which is what I want to do in this particular case. And you'll see why in a little bit. I can change the fill, which is whatever color is inside that shape. I can have it be a solid color. Let's make it a solid green. Or I can go in and make it a linear gradient or a radial gradient. Or I can even import a texture file, which is a little more complex. So I usually don't have my students do that. Now, when you switch to a gradient, you get little arrows to control exactly how you want it to blend. And you have more than one color option. Now it picked a lighter green for me. I'm just going to leave it like that because I think that looks pretty good. And I even have a fill option for my background, which I'm going to modify that as well. I'm going to switch that to a radial gradient. I'm going to have these colors be vastly different. Make that yellow, maybe make this one. Yeah, that's good. And now I have a delightful sunrise or sunset, depending on your perspective or point of view. All right, now the other way that I can create art on here is not by making it from scratch, but by going to the library. There is a lot of art available to you. It's sorted pretty well. You've got backgrounds, so you don't have to make them from scratch like I did. You've got characters that are all sorted out. Let's go into the characters here. Now, a lot of this content is online, meaning if you're not currently hooked up to the internet, you're not going to see it. But the great thing about that is the company that makes this can always add new stuff, and it shows up automatically if you are connected to the internet, and you just download whatever new content is there. So I can add any character I want, and I'm just going to add a little turtle, just for the sake of adding something. All right, now that character is really large to make him a little bit smaller. And now I'm going to have him move across the screen. Let's go back to tools so we can see all of our options here. Now 
the way this works out, the best way to do an animation in this particular program is to make your first frame, your first picture, your first slide be as perfect as possible. You want to make all your changes now because if you have to go back and say, oh wait, I didn't want the ground to be green, I wanted it to be blue or plaid or, or whatever, well now you have to make that change on every single one of the slides that you made and that's going to get annoying really fast. So you make the first one look as good as you can because after that we're just going to keep copying them. Now my duration here is at 0.5 s, so 0.5 seconds, half of a second. So if I hit play right now, the animation would last for a whole half a second. That can work for a lot of things. If I want that turtle just be sitting there for a while contemplating life and the existence of everything, well then I would increase the duration so that this frame would stay still longer. If I want this turtle to be speedy, I would make it shorter and 0 0.1 is as low as it's going to get. You can't make it any faster than that in this particular program. That's one-tenth of a second. Not as fast as what you see on TV or in the movies, but it works just fine for our purposes. All right, so let's make a quick animation. My turtle's over here on this side, and I am going to go up here to clone. Now, in previous versions of frames, I would click duplicate, but if the turtle was selected, then I'd suddenly have two turtles, and that's not what I wanted. So I'd have to click on the frame, then click Duplicate, and then move my character a little bit. But in frames 5, this is new. They have the Clone tool. I don't have to make sure I click on the frame down here. I just click Clone, and that makes a copy for me. Clone, and move, and clone, and move. I'm making this animation relatively short, but hopefully long enough that you get the idea for what's required. And now, I, if, if I rewind it and hit play, you can see my turtle running across, like so. Now, what if I wanted my turtle to stop in the middle and say something? Well, I can do that. I can add text. If I click on the T here, T for text. It adds a text box, which I can move around and resize, similar to any other shape that's available. And I have a bunch of options. I can change the font to something else. I can change the size to something else. I can change the color of the text. You can add a word bubble. So I just click on that little checkbox for bubble. And now I have a word bubble. And I can click on this little circle here and move this over so it looks like the turtle's actually saying that. And I could also go into edit and I could change the word bubble to look like something else entirely. And let's have him be thinking it instead of saying it out loud. All right, there we go. Now if I hit play, you know, that's showing up for one-tenth of a second. That's not slow enough to read. So this would be something where I go in and I change the duration of just that slide to something where maybe someone's going to be able to read it. In just over three seconds, let's see how that goes. That's probably a little too long, so let's make it go a little bit shorter. And that's much better. Alrighty, well, how do we save this? Well, if you are going to go back to it later and it makes more changes, you just go up to save here. But if you want to export this as a movie that can be seen elsewhere, you go to project, then go down to export, and you have a bunch of options here. If you're exporting it as a movie, particularly if it has sound in it, I recommend clicking web. You could click podcast too if you really wanted to. The formats are in many cases interchangeable, both of them will play on most computers. If there's no sound at all, or it's something that's simple enough that you'd like to repeat, you could even click on GIF here, which is a format that would play in most web browsers that are available. It's a pretty old format. In this particular case, I'm going to click Web, 
and it leaves a suffix here. Make sure you have that suffix or else the computer's not going to know what kind of file that is. And I'm just going to name it turtle. Hit save. And now it's exporting my movie.